want to order uh, paint from PPG, can I give them a color hex code to order? Uh, it's a little different than that. When ordering um, automotive paints, there's a color code on the car. So you basically give them year, make, and model color code. It's usually by the door, glove box, sometimes under the hood, sometimes in the trunk. Uh, different makes and models have these the color codes in different areas. Uh, I would contact your local auto body supply, okay, and uh, find out who the main guys are, the main paint distributors in your area. Call them up and say, hey, I got a color code. Uh, if you're doing color matching and you are going to be doing like a blend repair, it's highly recommended to give them a piece of the body panel that's adjacent to it or even take your vehicle over there at the paint shop so they can run the color scanner on it uh, and, and make a, a really good match for you. Um, so if you're doing blending and all that, of course, they're going to need the color code as well. So hopefully that helps, Robert. Um, Robert. Um, I got a question when using high build primer, should you sand and apply your base coat after cleaning up or with any primers? Is it necessary to sand before applying? Absolutely. Yes. You always want to sand any type of primer or 2k filler primer. Okay. Because, uh, when primers lay on, it's not like a sealer, you know, a spray before sealer where it's just, you seal it and then you spray on spray right on top of it. Okay. Uh, but a primer is a very, very good foundation, especially a 2K filler primer is a good foundation for any type of top coat, whether you're doing a single stage uh, or base coat, clear coat. Um, and I highly suggest and recommend sanding with a 400 grit uh, dry or wet sand um, because uh, eventually that 400 grit is going to turn to a 500 grit um, anywhere from four to 600 in preparation uh, before paint is the perfect grade tooth grade, sand mark, sand scratch grade uh, for painting. Okay. So yes, you should be blocking out and sanding high build 2K filler primer uh, before painting. And I, for 90% of my paint jobs, I, I finish with a 2K filler primer and then put my top coat on top of it. Sometimes if I have areas that I sanded, you know, prepping it and I got some body filler showing or metal showing, I would use a, a 1K sealer right, you know, right before I paint, just put some 1K sealer on these areas. You could do the whole panel if you want. You could just do the bodywork section, the metal section if you want, uh, and then and then spray your um, your your top coat on top of that. Is this making sense? With mini flakes before the candy, it depends. It depends. And uh, I actually have a step-by-step -step video coming out on the Honda Elite Moped project where we did sand because I was using a larger flake. So if you're using a larger flake, okay, it's going to feel pretty bumpy and rough, okay? You could go ahead, use some 800 grit or 1,000 grit, scuff the high edges down a little bit uh, before you put your candy on top of that or your, uh, your clear coat concentrate with candy inside of it, okay? So yes... Uh, if you're using a super fine micro sequence flake and uh, your inner coat feels pretty smooth, you don't have to sand it. All right. Let me know if that helps. Sub through high build primer is spot primer. Okay. I uh, just spray before laying base down. I just, yep. I kind of just answered that. So if you, if you sand through or rub through high build primer down to metal or body filler, you could use a spot primer. Okay. Uh, you could even use a 1K spot primer, but the problem with that is you have to be careful when using a wax and grease remover uh, on your final cleaning step because <clears throat> if you're using a 1K rattle can primer, your wax and grease remover okay, will melt it and you will have a problem with that. So I suggest not to even use a wax and grease remover around those areas. Just scuff it. You can wet sand it. You could dry sand it, tack it and just you'll be ready for paint. Uh, you could also just use a 1K sealer, like the Nason sealers that I use is just a 1K. You mix and you spray, it dries, and you could put your top coat right on top of that. Hopefully that helps. Let me know. Uh, my second question is, have you ever tried out a company's products by the name of Speed Coat, Speeder Coat? I've heard of them. I've never used the product. <clears throat> I know um, some VIPs at learnautobodyandpaint.com right over here have been using the pro the products so hey it's like to me paint products and spray guns are like shoe brands you're gonna try them out some shoe brands are gonna fit your foot better you're gonna like them better 
Uh, they're going to be more comfortable and you're going to go with it, you know? So experiment, you know, it's, don't be afraid to experiment. You know, I got Adidas, I got Nikes, I got new ports, not new ports, new balance, all types of shoe brands. Okay. And some of them you like, some of them you, you, you use once in a while. Some of them you use for base coats. Some of them you use for clear coats, you know, you just, Try it. Try it out. Don't be afraid to try other brands. But I would stay away from super cheap crap brands uh, when it comes to clear coat because the cheaper clear coats, uh, basically, they just use cheaper products. Of course, that's why they're cheaper. And some of those products, uh, the clear coats, when you mix them up, have a yellow tinge to it. So anytime I see a clear coat product with a yellow tinge, I'm kind of like, eh, you know, I'll go with a more of a medium grade or high grade um, when it comes to clear coats. So um, I've never personally tried Speedo Coat. I heard okay results, people using them. So, you know, maybe you might want to give it a go. I Ford F-150 at home in my garage and I don't have a paint booth. What is the best way to keep the dust down uh, when spraying sealer, base, and clear? So try to be in an area, uh, in a garage, you're in a garage, and blow it all out if possible, Okay. Um, wet the floor down. Okay. To try to right before you paint, wet the floor down and, uh, try to cover it up as much as possible. Okay. Close your doors. You could have a couple of openings, uh, for air intake and ventilation. Ventilation is very important because you want to see, you know, while you're painting bad ventilation equals fogged up garage, hard to see, um, and if you're, your light, depending on your lighting. So number one thing is your lighting, ventilation and incoming fresh air. So if you have like a backyard, like the way I'm set up, I have a backyard, fresh air, not too much dust. Um, I have clean air coming in and, um, I have a good exhaust fan blowing, blowing out. And, uh, so yeah, just make sure it's all blown out. You might want to put some canvas, plastic canvas or plastic you know, on your ceiling, depending, I don't know what your situation looks like there. Uh, but normally if you're, if you're, if you have an exhaust fan vent, you know, taking out air, it's sucking in air from somewhere. So if you're sucking in bad air from your attic, dusty air from somewhere, you just want to make sure that you get rid of it, suck in from a cleaner source or filter whatever air is incoming. Okay. Uh, but if you're in a clean area, you know, a little bit of fresh air doesn't, doesn't hurt. Okay. Um, because you do get, you could, and you do get dust and insects that pop in, in a completely sealed booth. You know, it happens, you know, you open a door, you close it, a fly comes in or a bug comes in. It happens to the best of us, even in a completely sealed environment. Sometimes you're going to get dust. All right. So, uh, so that's pretty much my tips. Um, and then, uh, the, the biggest tip probably is to make sure you hose out the floor, make sure the floor is clean, make sure your hose line is clean wipe it down. Um, and yeah, let me know if that helps to use sealer on top of 2k primer for silver candy. No, you don't. You could just this 2k filler primer. Okay. A 2k primer is a great foundation for base coats or single stage. Okay. I do it all the time. All right. Does the air size hose matter when spraying? Uh, yes, to a certain extent. Um, I would not use a quarter inch tube, okay? Quarter inch hose, too small. That's good for airbrush. You want to use at least a three eighths um, hose, okay? Quarter inch uh, couplings, okay, on a three eight, okay? Because mo most of the couplings for the uh, spray guns, hoses, DAs, pneumatic tools, a quarter inch coupling, but you have a three eighths hose, half inch hose overkill, not needed in automotive body work and painting. Okay. Three eighths hose is fine. Um, with quarter inch fittings. All right. As two K high build four to one. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's a perfect foundation for base coat clear coat, but I would definitely wet or dry sand that before painting. Okay. Donald Johnson, lifetime Learn Auto Body VIP member. Tony, I'm looking for recommendations on a good stud welder. I have a Harbor Freight one, and it's nothing 
uh, but issues with studs sticking to the panel. I would say just make sure your panels are grounded really well. Um, you know, ground down to metal. And also maybe you're not engaging your trigger and melting your studs on the panel long enough. Uh, because I've had, I do I have a cheap one? I think I have a cheap Harbor Freight stud welder and I have a good one, but the cheaper one works just as good as the good one. I forget which brand name I have on the on both of them actually, but there's one I paid like $350 for and I have a Harbor Freight one I paid half the price and they both work just as good. So I would say just make sure, and if you're looking for a good brand name stud welder, there's a brand name, I forgot the brand name. Um, it was a yellow one. I think it was called the B, the Bumblebee or something like that. Harbor Freight ones are yellow also. Chicago Electric, uh, H&S. It was actually the H&S Auto Shot is the the good brand. And you can get them from $230 to $450, depending on which one you get. So if you want to get a brand name one, check out the H&S. They've been around many, many years. Uh as far as a stud welder goes. Okay, H&S, check them out. Do you have to wet, or do you have to wet on wet thin with 10% then wait an hour to base and clear? Um, there's many ways to skin the cat, Rich Reese. You could try it either way. Um, you know, thinning out, you could try it, but if you have a rough surface, Definitely, I will. I would recommend sanding it um, before spraying base coat, clear coat. Okay, use a 400 grit to 500 grit. For a portable electric air compressor, I can use the power of spray gun. Trying a mobile paint service, you should look into some turbine systems. Um, you could look in. I've heard some VIPs of mine having good success with turbine systems. I've never really got into it. Possibly in the future, I could look into it, but at the moment. Um, I have my home garage set up. Uh, TNL says, do you have your own auto body shop? I had my own body shop for many years from 18 to 25 years old. Um, did tons of custom jobs. Um, basically was sick and tired of doing customer jobs, focused on my own jobs uh, as far as custom projects, buying and selling cars, flipping cars, turned to, to that model. Uh, wanted to get out of the industry because of the the chemicals. You know, I started getting a lot of headaches. Didn't want to do it for the rest of my life. So now I enjoy coaching, teaching people how to get into the trade. Um, but I still do it as a hobby. I do it to my projects, my home projects. I love customizing things. I just did another motorcycle, moped project, candy, super cool, looks amazing. Um, I have a 69, 67 Chevelle that we're going to be doing. We got a 99 Chevy van I'm doing next week. So I do it for fun. I do it for me and I do it for you guys um, to inspire you guys and to show you how to get things done, um, you know, and, and get professional results out of your own home garage or, or, you know, wherever you're doing it from. So, yeah, I've been in the industry for a long time, painted my first car when I was 15, bro. Um, I'm 40. I'm going to be 40 this year. So I've been been doing this a long time grew up with it my dad had a shop for 25 30 years um so so yeah only the base coats i get are one to one or two to one this letter was a thousand parts between four eight what is the reason behind these ratios i don't know it's their paint brand um so i would recommend going with whatever their mixing ratio is go with that uh, most of the products i use are ppg uh dupont sherman williams which is all one to one mix ratio when it comes to base coat so I don't know. It's if I finish high bill with 800 wet, 800 is okay, bro. But I would, I would rather you, rather you finish with a, with a 600, you know, stick in the four to 600s. If you're going to be painting on top of that. Okay. 800 is good for clear coat for flow coats. Okay. So if you're doing, if you complete your paint job, or if you're doing candies, custom paints or whatever, you want to put more clear coat on it after a day or two, you could sand it down with 800 grit. Uh, even up to a thousand grit to flow coat. Okay, so if you're going to be doing more coats of clear, 800 to a thousand is good. I just did my moped project. We went 800, then I finished off with a thousand, uh, and then put two more coats of clear on it. 
thing came out amazing, amazing, amazing. We got these videos coming out. I got tons of footage, guys, tons of unseen footage that are going to be coming out over the next few weeks and months. Um, and we're making more. We're making more. I'm starting the van project next week uh, just to bang all this stuff out for 2022. Um, I have enough content to, to, to be released for the next eight to 12 months. So it's it's coming, guys. Thanks for being patient. The lighting to use for painting in a garage. I have a gun bud, but still need more light. You could use fluorescence, set up some fluorescent lamps going around, LED lamps, you know, go to like Amazon, get some, get some um um LED photography lighting. That's what I have. That's what I use as well. Photography lighting, LED. Uh, those little, you know, those movie lights. I don't even know what you call them, but they, they're square. They have a tripod. You know, a bunch of LED light bulbs in them. You could change them. You can make them more warm, more cool color. Or, you know, you could change the lighting and um, and really good. And definitely set up your gun butt. And I think some people are misusing the gun butt. You guys know what the gun butt is? Where is it? I got to keep a gun butt in here available so I can show you guys um, the gun butt. But basically the gun butt here, I'll show you what the gun butt is on on Amazon. Well, if you go to Zula.com, you can check out any of their spray guns, the Atom spray guns. They come with a gun butt. There is a, a lighting setting where it's using the CLB lighting on it, and it it's, it's a very bright light, not the beam. You don't want to use the beam when you're using the gun butt. I, frankly, I think they should take that setting out. I never use it. You want to use the CLB light where it's the wide light and it lights up the whole area so 12.4 cfm at 28 psi paint gun help work with a 40 psi with 11.8 cfm compressor at 40 psi yeah you should be okay um depending on how big your your gallons are how many gallons it is um because if it's a small if you got a 10 15 20 gallon you're not going to have a lot of volumes stored up and packed in there as a reserve so you're going to be okay spraying little panels, but if you want to spray a complete car, you better have at least a 60-gallon um, reserve air tank, okay? Hopefully this helped you guys clear up some questions. Tony here from Paradise Garage and LearnAutoBodyAndPaint.com. Click the links down below or right over here to get some free training for a total newbie. And um, stay tuned for some new videos coming out within the next week. And um, I'll talk to you soon. Have a good day. Peace out. Aloha. And uh, don't forget to hit that like button, guys. Thanks, guys. See you guys next week. Peace.